Hi everybody. Happy autumnal equinox. Don't know if you know it, but this is a special time in the Earth's orbit around the sun. So just follow along as we go through this and um, hopefully it will make sense to you. So today, of course, is September 22nd, 2020, and it is a special day. So you obviously know, I hope, that the Earth spins around its axis. When your side of the Earth is facing the sun, you have daytime. When your side of the Earth is not facing the sun, you have nighttime. Um, this is a representation of our path around the sun. We spin a counterclockwise and we travel counterclockwise around the sun. Um, there are four uh, dates each year that mark the beginning of the seasons. And you are here down at the bottom. So this is um, a fillable document. That's a Google slide that you can type into. So today, um, anytime between September uh, 22nd or 23rd, rarely is it um, the 21st or the 24th, um, we have an equinox. And in the Northern Hemisphere, it's autumnal equinox because it's the first day of fall. In the Southern uh, Hemisphere, of course, it is the first day of spring, believe it or not. So that's kind of an interesting thing. I'm going to stretch this box out so it fits. There we go. Um, so uh, this is our relative position. Um, and what's interesting about, uh, well, we'll get to it in a minute. I'm going to keep going here. Um, of course, what comes uh, in three months is December, and I'm just going to abbreviate this, uh, on December 20th to 22nd, um, we have what's called a solstice, or sun stop. So both these words come from Latin, equinox means equal night and day, I'll talk a little bit about that's not quite true. Solstice means sun stop on December 22nd. Uh, for uh, the northern hemisphere, um, that's the lowest point in the sky that will perceive the sun, and um, that is because our planet is at a tilt. Okay. Um, after that, we have the first day of spring, which occurs in March, and that is what we call is another equinox. But this time we call it vernal equinox. And verde, vernal has to do with go rain. So in springtime, of course, everything starts getting green again. And then three months later in June, we have another sun stop. And that, of course, is summer solstice for us in the northern hemisphere which is the longest day of the year for the Northern Hemisphere peeps. Um, and it is also uh, when the sun is the highest in our sky, the apparent path of the sun. So how long does it take the Earth to get around the sun? It takes 365.25 days. Um, that two five days is the reason why we have to have a leap year every four years. It's actually, depending on what type of uh, year, there's different... Um, classifications. It's about six extra hours, um, which of course times four makes 24. That's another day. Um, so uh, that is the most correct answer for that question. The angle of the Earth's tilt, um, we are kind of like a giant top spinning in space. And this angle uh, causes uh, the sun's rays to hit directly at the equator only on equinoxes. And that is, here we go, number seven. <laughs> on an equinox, the sun's rays hit directly at the equator, and so it's perpendicular um, to basically all parts of the Earth exploring daylight at that time. Um, the rest of the year, like on winter solstice, um, the reason why we are starting into winter in December is because the sun's rays are very diffuse. They're spread out because of this tilt. In the summertime, they're more direct in the northern hemisphere and more spread out in the southern hemisphere. 
Uh, the average distance of the Earth to the Sun is 93 million miles. That uh, is about um, 150 million kilometers. Um, the um, actual uh, traveling um, uh, distances, because our orbit is, I'm skipping all over the place here, because our orbit is elliptical, very slightly, but it is elliptical. It's pretty close to a perfect circle. Um, because our orbit's elliptical, we actually have different uh, uh, date, uh, at different times of the year, we're closer and farther from the sun, and it might not be as intuitive as you think. All right, number six asks you, when is the Earth closest to the sun? And I bet a bunch of you said summertime. That is absolutely false. So there's actually terms for um, closest to the sun. Perihelion. So helios is the old name for the sun. Peri, like in close proximity this is how I remember it. Um, perihelion occurs for planet Earth on winter solstice. What the heck? Um, and that, well, I should say December. I'll just say December solstice. It's winter solstice for us, but it's not for everybody. And that is when we are approximately uh, 91.4 uh, million miles away. Do it like this in scientific notation because you're supposed to know that. Um, when we are farthest away, at helion, okay, uh, again, I just do I find crazy ways for everything. So, A for away, P for proximity, closest proximity. Um, we're at at helion um, as a planet on the June solstice. Surprise! And that is because we are. It's a slightly, slightly elliptical orbit, it really isn't that much. The eccentricity, the eccentricity of our orbit is quite small. Um, I believe it is about one and a half percent difference from summer to winter, but that is, um, it's measurable. We know that distance and we know that it's real. So um, we're closest in December and we're farthest in June, which is wackadoodle for those of us up in this. Northern Hemisphere, because we think we should be closest in June, because that's the start of summer. That is just not true. The distance from the sun is not the reason for the seasons. Okay, So uh, let's go back to number four. What's a uh, revolution? Well, we revolve around the sun. So that is a year on planet Earth. Uh, capitalize this. I know it's not in vogue anymore. And we rotate around our axis. And of course, that means that makes night and day. All right, so we've um, got a lot of information here. Uh, here we go. Um, so the Latin equinox means equal night. We don't really have equal length night and days. Um, at the equator, it's really close, but there's some definition thing about how sunset and sunrise. Sunrise is when the sun's peaking over the horizon. Sunset doesn't happen until it's all the way under the horizon. So there's some of that variation. Um, and then there's also uh, variation uh, due to uh, latitude, how far uh, north or south you are from the equator. And there's also some uh, refraction of light that um, that causes the time to be slightly skewed um, as the sunlight goes through the Earth's atmosphere. All right, the real reason for seasons on planet Earth has nothing to do with distance from the sun. It's all about the tilt of the Earth's axis. And the Earth's axis is tilted so when we're tilted away from direct sunlight, we have more diffuse light and it cools off. Tilted towards is more intense light and that makes it get warmer. And there's also a delay, of course, in maximum and minimum temperatures. They don't just happen instantaneously. 
takes a while for the solid earth to cool off or warm up. And that, my friends, is the end of our uh, discussion on the movement of the earth around the sun.